You ask any victim, they don't want what happened to them to happen to other children. I couldn't live with this crime just going under the bridge, you know, just being okay. It's not okay. Never was, never will be. When we reported it to our local priest, he came here to this house and as he was leaving, after we told him, we were walking up the hall and with his back to us, he said, don't tell anybody. And my husband Anthony and I just looked at each other because we had learnt in that previous month that that is what they said to survivors, um, parents of survivors, to keep it in-house. I turned round, walked straight down the hall, picked up the phone and rang people to tell them because there was no way I was going to obey that. So we banded together, there were about 45 of us, and we had meetings. We were demanding from the church that they come and try and um, heal. All the time we were trying to get meetings with the Archbishop was because we wanted to present to him our case. In the meeting with Anthony and I, it was impossible to finish a sentence about any of it because George Pell would jump down the throat of my husband. I hope you can substantiate what you're saying, prove what you're saying in court. I've lived through the damage, the heartache, the death, you know, the, the self-harming, the overdoses, the ambulances, the police, that, you know, I've lived through so much of that for so many years. So all of this just spurred on what we had to do because they were protecting criminals. There were times when I felt like giving up because I'd written to politicians and not got anywhere. Child sexual assault back then, 1996, was pretty much a taboo subject. So I had to show this to people somehow. Countering that ignorance, that, that silence, with knowledge is the remedy. What took us to Rome was a hearing that George Powell was meant to be coming to. We thought if we went there, then at least there'd be two people to witness what was going on. The media coverage in Rome was astounding. The role of the media has been absolutely vital. They took all the stories from the Royal Commission over five years to the people. You know, informing, analysing, just bringing the subject up and educating the population. The Royal Commissioner, Peter McClellan, said to me, laws cannot be changed without the people wanting that change. People change the law, and that's what we see happening now. The Royal Commission over that time provided a forensic look at documents, people, victim stories. It was incredible. There's nowhere else in the world that's done such a huge look at child sexual assault. People were able to tell their stories. There were over 8,000 private sessions. That's what had to happen. Exposure of this behaviour Taxpayers have paid $4.5 billion to get those Royal Commission recommendations. We need to implement them all, not just some, not pick and choose, all of them, if we want to help this problem go away. I want everyone to understand it, understand the deception, the betrayal, um, their uncaring, um, attitude. They shouldn't be held in high regard or esteem or listened to by politicians. They've gotten away with it for centuries. I'm a mother. 
and I will protect my children. I've been part of this for 23 and a half years now. Children need our help. Everybody wants this to stop.